Hi everybody, I'm Ali Talakoli and this is part 6 of our Unimer tutorial series. In this part, we want to talk about sequence diagrams. So if you're ready, let's get it started then. Sequence diagram. Sequence diagram captures the time sequence of message flow. I mean, method call from one object to another. It actually shows the sequence of uh, the method calls from one participant to another. It shows which methods are triggered and when they have been triggered exactly. So in our example here, this is a sequence diagram that is going to demonstrate a teaching process. It actually, a sequence diagram shows that uh, what participants, these are participants, are going to taking part in this process and what are the method calls the sequence. I mean, which methods are going to be called one after another. This is a message or a method call and uh, uh, these are participants as I said each participant has a lifeline this is a lifeline this is a message to self because the participant itself has called its own method this box over here we call it the sequence fragment each sequence fragment has different types for example this sequence fragment type is loop this sequence fragment type is optional and uh, we will get into more details uh, and i will explain these sequence diagrams into details later but first let's see for whom this sequence diagram is System designers and developers. Purpose describe the message flow in the system interaction among objects, important elements, participant, which is actually an object most of the times, but they can be any part of our system that is taking part in an interaction. Sequence fragment, it's a box that contains some interactions, has different types that each type has a meaning. Here are the different types optional negative negative alternative reference loop break parallel assert and critical points to consider draw only objects that are taking part in the interaction just like the object diagram that we should draw only objects that are taking part in this scenario that we are demonstrating this is also true about the sequence diagram and uh, the second point to consider is that uh, draw the sequence in which the messages are flowing in order. So the sequences uh, we have to uh, draw them uh, in which the, the flowing is happening. Use the right type of sequence fragments if they have been needed. So if we have any sequence fragments in our sequence diagram, and we should use the correct type for it. Steps. How to draw the sequence diagram? It's easy. Start drawing from the very first message that is going to be triggered in the piece of software we're going to draw its diagram. And uh, yeah, the use case main flow helps us in finding where to start and where to go after that. So uh, we at first we have to see what is the first message that is going to be triggered. And uh, then after that, we will draw the sender and receiver participants for that message. And then we will continue and go on and draw other uh, messages. Uh, until we are complete and finish with the process that we are going to demonstrate. So that's how we can draw sequence diagrams. Now let's take a look at our examples in more details. Alright, in this sequence diagram we are going to demonstrate teaching process and what methods are going to be triggered one after another. So from left to right we will draw the participants that are taking part in the teaching process in order of sequence. I mean, 
the teacher participant uh, be because the teacher participant is the first participant that is going to trigger the first message i mean the learn method in our process so we have drawn it as the first participant and as a teacher and a student in our example are actors actually we have specified that by the actor delta so let's take a look at uh, what each element mean actually uh, this is a message that we show it uh, like this arrow and uh, this is a syn uh, synchro synchronous message and this is an asynchronous message we show it like this this is a message to self the student participant itself call, has called its own method so we show message to self like this uh, this is a reply message when the answer questions method has been called the result of it and gets back to the teacher participant and we show it uh, by the reply message each participant has a lifeline so we show the lifeline like this and uh, uh, let me see yeah and uh, a message can cause another to another uh, participant to be created so uh, we will uh, show that by the create stereotype and its opposite can also happen a message call can cause another participant to be destroyed so we show that by the destroy stereotype all right let's see what's going to happen in our sequence diagram to demonstrate the teaching process here we will show the messages that are going to be triggered from top first one learn to the bottom which is the last one is the take exam and it's is, is the result is exam results so the first thing that is going to happen is that the teacher participant calls the learn method of the student and uh, we demonstrate that and this call uh, this message causes the session participant to be created so we uh, draw it like that after that the add learned lesson will be called so the session uh, participant will call the add learned lesson method of the course participant and after that take exercise method of the student participant will be called by the teacher after that the students uh, uh, likes to practice the lesson then so it itself calls uh, the practice method of itself so, by, so we demonstrate that by the message to self and then uh, teacher uh, review the lesson and then take exercise and then the student again calls a message to itself the method is memorized and then we will have uh, the answer questions method which teacher uh, participant calls actually this method of the student and then the results will get back to the teacher actually we have drawn it in the optional sequence uh, fragment because uh, this is an optional functionality that can happen and uh, we may not use it so we have drawn it in an optional sequence fragment after that uh, teacher will call the take summary method of the student and this message will cause the session participant to be destroyed so we demonstrate that like this and draw an x uh, at the lifeline of the session participant and all of these 
messages are all in the loop sequence fragment and uh, this is the actually guard condition of the loop sequence fragment so it actually means that all of these actions happen as long as the learned lessons is less than the all lessons and after that the loop ends and we will be here the teacher calls the method take exam of the student and that causes the course uh, participant to be destroyed and after that the student will uh, will give the teacher the exam results and that's it the teaching process is done right in another example of uh, the sequence diagram I try to explain some other elements of the sequence diagram such as the alternative uh, sequence fragment with its guard conditions in alternative sequence fragment based on the guard conditions uh, which most of, in most of the times we use OCL uh, so based on these guard conditions one of these actions will happen and uh, after that we can also uh, use the reference uh, sequence fragment which actually a reference to another sequence diagram so if here we're going to do lots of works and uh, uh, going to take care of lots of actions uh, uh, we can use actually a reference sequence a fragment and uh, in that uh, and in an other sequence diagram draw those actions and uh, here we have used a negative sequence fragment and it means that everything inside of it should not be uh, should not happen at all in our system so you may say that uh, why uh, we should draw something that is not going to happen at all in the system well sometimes you may need it to emphasize that uh, those actions should not happen at all because you may need to show that to your developers or programmers uh, so that they can understand how the system should work uh, more clearly and this is how we demonstrate when a message has been found and this is how we demonstrate when a message gets lost and yeah we have different types of sequence fragments uh, for example parallel which is like the alternative uh, sequence fragment but uh, as its name implies uh, the actions should happen in parallel and at the same time and it doesn't uh, have uh, guard conditions unlike the alternative sequence fragment and we also have a break sequence fragment uh, which will be used in the loop sequence fragment uh, when in a certain condition uh, we need to break our loop uh, or a critical sequence fragment which is uh, uh, something that is critical and must happen so that's all there is to the sequence diagrams i hope you enjoyed it please don't forget to subscribe to be notified of our upcoming tutorials and we'll see you in the next part of our UNR tutorial series so see you there